sit still y'all know that's a spirit sit still is a spirit most of us didn't struggle with that when we were young because there was a remedy y'all remember that that remedy that pinch it's a signature church pinch it's not like any other pinch it don't even feel the same when it's at home you know why because when you get it at church you can't squeal you gotta hold it in so it's like it does something different and then they twist it Boy, if you don't, oh, and then you just, what? Yeah, we'll fix that. Spirit, you know, yeah. Oh, dig in, too. And when I was growing up, anybody could do it. Sister Boo Flu, if you sit next to her, she gonna pinch it. And then tell your parents, and that's a whooping. My daddy would stop preaching, Craig, in the middle of the sermon. I thought that was God talking. It is, Craig. We'll teach you how to sit in here. But anyway, I don't know why I went into all of that, but that's why if you had a question why we don't have a nursery and all that, and then think about it. Who's working the nursery and how stable are they gonna be spiritually missing all the services? They in there trying to start a new church with the children. Soon as you get old enough, we get out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Folks volunteering to miss church. I'll work. Who wants to go to youth? I, hey, everybody can't go. <laughs> no, we don't do that. We come in here, get the word together. Amen. 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 Y'all okay with that, right? You know, some things at ABC, well, mostly everything at ABC is never going to change. Amen. Amen. The only way for you to stop it is to just go somewhere else. Because it's been working. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 But anyway, we thank God for another opportunity to come. And let me get through this message. Because uh, this is a special message. Something that the Lord was dealing with me. And I was dealing with some stuff. Uh, hold on. Anybody ever been hurt? Anybody hurt right now? Yeah. You know, the church, you know, and, you know, and I don't like to say the church was just all wrong, but some churches kind of use the spirit of the Lord to hide things that were really going on. As if there was a meta-human status we could achieve as believers. And when I say meta-human, I mean above human where we didn't feel certain things. You know, but we all feel hurt. Yes, amen. 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 And look at somebody and say, hurt hurts. Hurt hurts. It hurts when it's hurting. And so there's no need of us in church trying to act like it don't. Amen? It hurts when people do you wrong. Mother, father, husband, wife, children. Folks do you wrong. It hurts when folks backstab. People you loved turn on you. That hurts. Amen? Lie. When people lie on you. Especially when they said they loved you. That hurts. When people say they love you, but they want to see you hurt. That hurts. Amen. Amen. It hurts. Dr. Janine has a test she can give you, and it'll show up on the test. Yeah, don't take that test. If, you ain't ready, if you're not ready to deal with yourself. Don't take that frequency test now. She got a new machine too now, a body, full body scan machine. So, you know, she, she, she's waiting to unleash that. But we, 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 I'm telling you, and your body can't hide it. And your body can't hide the correlation between what's wrong with you physically and the hurt. Yeah. There is a correlation. Yeah. Yes, sir. 
If Jesus hurt to the point of anguish where his sweat turned into blood, that tells you that his emotions manifested in the natural realm. What he was going through in his mind and his heart, his feelings, overtook a biological process to express themselves. Yeah. And you can trace most cancers, most of them, you can trace them to some kind of emotional trauma, depending on where the cancer is. Yeah, because we hurt. We hurt. And it hurts when it hurts. Amen. And so this message is for the hurt ones. Me. You know, when God deals with me, that's all of us. If I'm the pastor. Amen. So I'm preaching this message. Amen. To me. Because, you know, God had to show me. He said, you, are, you hurt. And I said, Lord, I'm good. You know I'm tough. <laughs> Telling the Lord, you know I'm tough. He, he, he made me. You know I'm tough. No, 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 no. Uh, your test you keep taking, everything is showing that you are wounded. You're this dude right here walking around like this because people close to you hurt you. For no reason at all. And that hurts. And you can't stop it from hurting when it hurts. Amen. Adamandbeliever.com forward slash the hurt ones dot P D F. First statement I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make three. Statements, and then I'm going to close this out. But three realizations that I had to come to. And a, just a close friend of mine who just reads my heart sometimes like a book. He called me just out of the blue. We just talking. And then he just went right there. And the first thing he told me was, you will hurt. You will hurt. He wasn't even talking about this. I said, what you mean? He said, everybody is going to hurt. And when you hurt, it's going to hurt. We all must suffer in this life. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. Being hurt by others is a part of our election to Christ's sufferings. Yes, so if you want to be in Christ. You got to hurt like Christ. Yeah. That's the same as when you get married. When I took on the responsibility of marrying this beautiful lady right here, she is beautiful. I don't want nobody not good to look at. Amen. Amen. And she keep herself. You need to keep it going. Don't, don't cross the finish line and say... I'm in now. <laughs> I'm just about to. <laughs> I'm gonna show you the real me. No, no. Keep the old, keep 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 the other one. That's the one I married. I don't want, I don't want to see the real one. <laughs> but <laughs> but being hurt by others is a part of our election. So when I elected to marry her then when she hurts, I'm going to hurt. Then when I elected to marry her, I took a chance on whether or not she would sometimes hurt me. Because she, she, she's going to. She did. And I hurt her. I'm going to. We took the chance on that, but we said because we love each other, we'll take a chance on it. That's what love is. Amen. That's why I hate this social media. The social media, man, if we had had social media, you'd be looking down the timeline to see all of what they've been through, what they've been doing, who they've been talking to. Man, you done spoiled all the surprises. 
You know too much now. I'd rather make the blind decision and trust God. Amen. Amen. Oh, they're not clapping now. That's why folks not married. You know too much. Some of that stuff you're supposed to know on the 10th date. The 10th date. Yes, not supposed to know that first. Amen. Amen. Just clean your pages up. That's what you do. Clean your page. Look at somebody say, clean your page up. Amen. Amen. And if you've been saved since you've been on the internet, take the unsaved stuff off. I, that's what I don't understand. I was talking to a young lady the other day. I said, won't you take all the stuff off when you was in witchcraft? Why would you keep that up? People need to know where I came from. Those are spells. They watching those spells. You're going to take them. Delete that. Well, let me get back on the subject. Being, <laughs> being hurt by others is a part of our election to Christ. So that's a part of it. When we elected to be a part of what Christ has been through, we elected to go through some of the things that he went through. Amen. 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 Now, no, none of us have to give our lives in the sense of dying. None of us have to give our lives in the sense of giving up the ghost like he did. But we do have to give our lives in the sense of dying to ourselves. Amen. Dying to our will, our wants, and our desires. Somebody said, well, my wants and my desires, that's my vision. That's my passion. Well, it needs to change. It needs to change into what God's passion for you is. What is God's will for you? Just because you want to do it don't mean he wants you to. And just because you want to do it don't mean it's good for you. Do you know how far you can see? Keep backing up and looking at something. Watch how soon you can't see it anymore. That's as far as you can see. And you don't know what you're doing. You know how I know? I know you don't know what you're doing because of all the times you fail trying to do it. So you have to trust in God's ability. Someone that's Alpha and Omega, meaning beginning and the end. That means he can see the end and the beginning. And that's who I'm trusting. In order to reign with him, we must suffer in some of the same ways he suffered. 2 Timothy 2 and 12, if we suffer, we shall also what? Reign, reign with him. If we deny him, he also will what? deny us and that's a whole lifestyle of denying yeah. that means when he's knocking you're not answering he said behold I stand at the door and knock but you can live your entire life ignoring his knock and not opening the door Jesus hurt until he died he hurt until he died. He was betrayed by his closest friends. He was falsely accused by those that didn't really know him. And he was killed by those that were jealous of him. That's why they mocked him and put, hail king of the Jews. They were jealous that people considered him king of the Jews. So they mocked him with what they were jealous about. Isn't that sad how you can get so jealous that you want to kill somebody? That's why you got to be very careful who's close to you. Amen. Because it's okay for someone to admire you. But when somebody wants to be you, that means that one of y'all has to go. Yeah. 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 I tell people all the time, prison is full of folks that were jealous. That's who's in there. Jealousy and envy. First murder in the Bible. Jealousy. That's what the jail is full of. 
I was like, how could he do that? Bro, you don't know what he's capable of doing if he's jealous. You jealous enough, you will kill somebody. Yeah. Jesus died until he hurt. He was betrayed and all of these things. But none of these things stopped him from what? Fulfilling his purpose. So no matter how bad you hurt, guess what you got to do? Fulfill your purpose. Amen? The good thing about it is folks wouldn't be trying to do it to you if you wasn't fulfilling your purpose. Nobody attacking a deadbeat. <laughs> He's doing a good enough job on himself. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, nobody picking at the crackhead. Ain't no crowd of people around the crackhead pointing their finger. Trust me, the crack is doing it all by itself. <laughs> yeah, no, but people that are fulfilling a purpose, that bothers certain people. And you know why it bothers them? Because they're not doing it. So if you're with somebody, close to somebody or something, and they're fulfilling a purpose, and you see God working, and God's not working in your life, that makes you jealous. That's what Cain did. Cain was like, hey, Abel is getting all the benefits and the blessings. Lord, you love him. God said, well, won't you do what he's doing? If you do what he's doing, then y'all will be equal. A jealous person don't want to be equal. They want to replace you. I don't want to be equal to him. I want to be him. Because as long as he's here, I'll be jealous. Can I keep preaching in here? Yeah. But none of these things stop Jesus. 1 Peter 3 and 18, for Christ also hath once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might what? Bring us to God. Being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. We will endure the same things in this life, and it will be painful. Anybody ever went through some pain? Man, this life can cause some pain. Yeah. Yeah. However, Jesus went through it all so we can go through it. Amen. Amen. This is why it's so important to read your Bible. Yeah. When you get to feeling down on yourself and oh, my life is trash, read what Jesus went through. Amen. When you get finished, you'll be like, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yeah, however, Jesus went through it all so we can go through it. This is how we connect with him, by enduring hurt without allowing it to stop the purpose that God is working out in us. That's our connection with him. The Bible says he's not a high priest, that he cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was at all points tempted. He felt everything we feel. Without sin, but he felt everything we feel. So he can be touched. Touched to the point to where he will be your advocate. God, let him off the hook. The boy is hurting. Let her off the hook. She's going through a lot right now. That's an advocate. That's an act. See, some of y'all may not need that. You know, you, you sanctimoniously sanctified. You don't. You don't need the advocate. I need the advocate. Yes, this is how we connect with them. We go through the hurt, but we don't let it stop us. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I get so, it just makes, it, it makes me almost sick when people start talking about that's why I don't go to church. And that's why I don't, I don't know, you know, that's why I left, had to leave that alone. And because I was hurt and I was this, church hurt and somebody did this and all that. Y'all, that's so ridiculous. 
that means that you couldn't partake in Christ's sufferings anyway. You can't be with Christ if you can't partake in his sufferings and stay steadfast and planted regardless of what you're going through. You're going to let what people do stop your eternal destination? You're going to let what people say stop your God-given purpose? You're going to let what people did haunt you and make you quit on God? I don't even understand that. Because no matter what's going on, you can't separate me from the love of God. Not tribulation, not distress, not peril, not sword, not famine, not nakedness. Nothing shall separate me. What are you talking about? What somebody said? What somebody did? How you were raised? My daddy, my mama. You're going to let that stop you. Philippians 3 and 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may what? That's when you love somebody, when you share in their sufferings. Your wife takes ill. Your husband takes ill. You quit? Let me go find somebody healthy. No, you share in their sufferings because you love them. That's why I didn't understand this pandemic. Uh-oh. Yeah, I didn't understand the pandemic. I didn't understand folks. I didn't understand the switch that these Holy Ghost field folks had. I didn't understand that switch where you can just flip it off and not want to be around none of your loved ones. I, that's a switch. I didn't have it. Amen. 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 I met with the elders. I said, well, we don't know what it is, but if it's killing everybody, then I'm ready to die. Amen. I said, because I'm staying around everybody. I'm going to keep hugging everybody. I'm going to keep loving everybody. And we're not closing this church. I said, who's with me? And each one of the elders, well, almost, they all said, you know what? I'm with you. Because we're the front line. If the others ain't willing to stand in the front line, nobody's going to stand. So we got in the front line. We said, let it come. Whatever they say is out there. Amen. 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 Oh, and I'm going to share in their sufferings. Amen. Look at somebody. <laughs> you know. <laughs> pray, pray that I get there. because <laughs> No. Hey, grandmama. Grandmama Thought something was wrong with your hip She got out of there doctor <laughs> Grandmama are we gonna eat this Thanksgiving dinner With these masks on I don't know But you better not take them off <laughs> See that rock in the front yard? Go sit on that. <laughs> Grandma, we're here to see you. Okay, I'll look out the window. Oh, hey, y'all. <laughs> no, nah, man, come here, Grandma. I'm going to hug you and kiss you and sneeze. <laughs> so I can share in your sufferings. <laughs> That's real love. Amen. Amen. Brother, did you try to shake their head? <laughs> what is that move? How you doing, brother? <laughs> Good gracious. What? <laughs> and it happened quick. Like overnight. Like the same folk used to hug you up. But <laughs> you get one knuckle dab. One knuckle. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not. Do- no, I'm sharing in the sufferings. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To become like him 
in his death. He saw 10 lepers. They came to him because nobody would entertain a conversation with him. Because everybody said, y'all are unclean. Was Jesus worried about catching what they had? Or was Jesus content on giving them what he had? That's me. I'm not catching what you got. I'm going to give you some of what I got. Some of this Holy Ghost power. I'm not worried about you transmitting to me. I'm the transmitter. I'm the transmitter. Amen. Well, anyway. Next point I got to tell you. Not only are you going to hurt, but you're not going to forget it. Mm. It's the one, J. Brian. Take your time. This is the one. You, you can't forget it. If you think you can forget it, you fooled yourself. It don't happen like that. Mm. Oh, human brains. Can't forget it. Mm. Forgive and forget is not in the Bible. As a matter of fact, it's not even possible. It's not possible. No, somebody may not agree with that. You forgave and forgot something. But you didn't forget it because you thought about it as soon as I said this. Man, look, we're not going to have a church. I just don't want no foolishness. I don't want to be walking around here preaching something because it sounds good and it fits a good narrative. We're going to tell the truth in here. Amen. That message about money that I did last week, it was so hard to post. It was so hard to post because I know so many pastors have got that wrong. But I had to post it because that's just what we believe. Amen. Amen. Because, because it's the truth. Amen. If I can prove it in the Bible, I'm sorry about your feelings. Amen. But if it's in the Bible, Amen. it is the truth. Amen. Amen. But forgive and, for, God, forgive and forget is not in the Bible. As a matter of fact, it's not even possible. Sure, we can forgive people for what they do to us, but in some cases, it's impossible to forget because there are markers, scars, or permanent results of what was done that affect our lives forever. That's why you gotta be careful what you do to people how you treat people, how you get mad and go off on people because there are scars, permanent, that you can't erase. How you expect that person to forget? Proverbs 10 and seven, the memory of the just is blessed. Bible says it's good to have a good memory. As long as you just. Amen. Amen. Jesus kept nail prints on his hands and feet. And the wound in his side. For a reason. He could have just healed those. And appeared as if it didn't happen. But he chose to keep. The reminders. Of what he endured. This was a testament of how he overcame everything that was done to him. He defeated death, but he also defeated life. What do you mean by that? He defeated everything that happened to him during his lifetime. He defeated it. He didn't become petty. He didn't bring it up. He took it. To defeat it. This is how 
you go through. This is how you go through. This is how you deal with what's going on in your life. This is how you handle people doing you badly. You keep the scars as reminders, but you don't let them stop your purpose. Yeah. John 20 and 27. Well, this is, this was a testament. Yeah, John 20 and 27. Then saith he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believe it. He said, this is me, because look, I still bear what was done to me. Yeah. Can you imagine how Peter them felt? How Peter felt? When he's warming himself at the fire and saw Jesus coming. Jesus is coming. With hand, nail prints in his hand and a gash in his side coming to Peter. The Bible said Peter didn't have any clothes on. He had just become a wild man. Messed up in the head. You know why? Because he betrayed him. He sold him out. And to see those hand pr nail prints, could you imagine what that made Peter feel like? And Jesus walked up to him and just told him, feed my sheep. Yeah, just, I need you to fulfill your purpose. I carried you around all this time with me to learn so you can fulfill your purpose. Yeah, but Jesus, look what I did to you. He said, yeah, but because of this, you got to be one with it now. Now you got to work for me. Fulfill your purpose because of this. And that's all of us. How dare we turn our back on Christ after all he's done for us. You don't worry about people after what he's done for you? When we are scarred, marked, or physically altered by what people have done to us, we live with these things as testaments of how to overcome. So you're not going to forget. Look at somebody and say, you're not going to forget. You just live with it as a testament. Yeah, Because as you keep going, you'll get stronger. You won't think the same way about it. But you're not going to forget it. I would almost say, this is just my opinion, God don't want you to forget. You need to remember. Not so that you'll feel a certain way, but so you can get over feeling a certain way. How big was Jesus to be able to walk right up on Peter and give him a charge with the same love he had before? Yeah. What about Judas? He died. That's a different kind of betrayal. Jesus, Judas' betrayal was for money. He don't get another shot. I know I'm preaching in here. Yeah. Somebody said, well, you're not God. You don't know. I agree. Judas' guts were spilled all over the field. Killed himself. Well, amen. It's getting, it's getting hot in here. Amen. Well, you just make sure you're not Judas. Amen. Don't you betray somebody for some money, fame, to be that dude. But when we are scarred, marked, or physically altered by what people have done to us, we live with these things as testaments of how we overcame them. We can't forget what happened. And in most cases, we cannot change the results of it. 
but we live in peace knowing that we are able to what? Overcome. 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 Y'all said last week y'all were overcomers. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. Hebrew 10 and 32, but call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, ye endured a what? Great fight of affliction. So in Christ, you're going to deal with a great fight of afflictions. I don't believe we've seen the worst of it. And it don't have to be the government shutting down the church and all that. No, it's going to be the family members shutting you down. Yeah, ones that, has, ones that have the mark of the beast. You think they're going to let you get away with not getting it? It's coming. And you just better be ready. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't worry about stuff like that because I read the Bible. If you read the Bible, you don't worry about stuff like that. Amen, because you watch the whole world dark. And only light was God's people. I saw that in the Bible. I saw frogs jumping all in folks' dinner plates everywhere. And God's people wasn't no frogs. Yeah. Yeah. I saw the firstborn drop dead. In a whole kingdom. Even the Pharaoh's child. But among God's people, everybody was alive. I've seen it, so I know no matter what they say is coming, I know what God can do. I know what my God, now I, I don't know what God you're talking about, but the God of the Bible, I have examples. I've seen him make ways out of no way. I've seen him make food in, out of air and rain food down and feed his people out of the air. I've seen him hit a rock and water, fresh water, pour out of a rock when there was nothing else to drink. I've seen him purify rotten water. All right, sit down. Amen, y'all. Yeah, amen. It's all the truth. So when I read the Bible, I ain't worried about what's going on out there. No, 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 no. Now I know what I'm not going to do, and I know what the line is. But I trust in the one that did all these things in the Word. And I believe if he did it then, he can do it again. Jesus even said, greater things shall we do. Greater things. Yeah, it's the end of the world. In case you haven't checked. You can barely breathe outside. Can I keep going? Many times we shouldn't forget certain things because what we endured made us better. As bad as it hurt, Jay, it made us better. As hard as it was to go through, it made us better. We are wiser, more understanding, and have better discernment because of what others put us through. Yep. Also, it's good to remember so we will never have to go through it again. Amen. If you remember, you say, oh, uh -huh. not again. Not again. I'm handling it different this time because what I went through the first time. Not again. So it's good to remember. Romans 5, 3 and 4. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings knowing that the suffering produces endurance and the endurance produces character and character produces what? Hope. There is no hope if you don't have character. 
if you if you nothing and feel like a nothing, if you got jive turkey itis, there's no hope. There's no hope for a jive turkey. He's gonna be jive no matter how you bake him. But if you go through, it'll produce endurance. Meaning, I went through that. Made me stronger. Then once you get endurance, it produces character. Because you're the one that went through that. And made it through. And with that character, now you have hope. Now I can really do something with this. Amen. So sometimes you go through stuff just to give you hope. This the one that sucks. I'm just gonna let it marinate. You know, people just covered being a pastor, and they just have no, they, they don't know. You know, you don't know how when the responsibility falls on you, I mean, falls on you to where you have to do it God's way for the sake of everybody else. You don't know what that feels like. Yeah. When you, when you know you could fight back and win, that's different. And you still can't? But God, I'm going to win a victory for the... <laughs> Be a battle axe, Lord. <laughs> What's that song? Oh, he's a battle axe. In the time of a battle, he's a battle axe. Oh, that's an ugly song. <laughs> Lord, let me be the battle axe. That's the axe you don't even have to sharpen. It's so big, it's going to do the same amount of damage, short or dull, <laughs> on both sides. <laughs> God, let me just be a battle ram. Just launch me into the, into the belly of the infidel. <laughs> No, 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 you can't fight back. Can't fight back. You mean I gotta sit here and let folks hurt me? Jesus did not fight back. He didn't fight back. He did not retaliate. And he did nothing malicious in his defense. He did not explain himself. He didn't argue his points or debate his innocence. Instead, he showed us that it's better to endure hurt than to fight back. I wouldn't look for a hand clap because I probably wouldn't clap at that. That's what he did. That's Jesus. Don't you hate them kind of preachers? Now that's Jesus. But here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I ain't <hate> him.
Matthew 27 and 14, and he answered him to never a word. He never said anything. They are accusing him. He never came to his own defense, nothing. Inasmuch that the governor, Pilate, marveled. He was impressed. He could not believe that this man is not coming to his own defense. Because Jesus knew he had to teach us a lesson. It's better to endure. It was the plan of God that kept Jesus. When his flesh no longer wanted to do it, the will of God kept him going. Yeah. Remember he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, Lord, God, is there any other way? Is there another way other than what I have to go through? But then he prayed, not my will, but your will. So it was the will of God that kept him going when his flesh didn't want to do it. And it's got to be the will of God to keep you going when your flesh don't want to do it. I had a conversation with the Lord. Jay, and I said, God, come on now. Come on. Why do I have to deal with this? And God said, because you're going to the end. I wouldn't have picked you if you were a quitter. You're going to finish. The scripture said it like this. When he begins a good work, he that begins a good work in you, he shall complete it. It's going to finish if you know that it's him. So you got to keep going. So Jesus knew, even though my flesh don't want to do it, is there another way? But then he said, not my will, but your will. This is called kenosis. This state of emptying out our will for his. Your will has to die. That's kenosis. The emptying out of what you want to do and who you want to be. For who he says. Are you willing to do that? When it seems too hard, we must rely on the spirit of the Lord to carry us through it. And there's going to be times when it's too hard to be quiet. It's too hard, Lord, to put this kitchen knife down. What? Yeah, you ready to just go off? But when it seems too hard, you got to rely on the spirit of the Lord to carry you through it just like Jesus did. So we can do what God wants us to do and not what our flesh decides. How many times have your flesh got you in trouble? Every time you've been in trouble. Let me ask that question again. How many times have your flesh got you in trouble? Every time you've been in trouble. So you going to keep doing what your flesh wants and it keeps getting you in trouble? We cannot fight back. We must simply endure. John 18 and 11. Then Jesus said unto Peter, put up thy sword. What you going to do, Peter? Put your sword up. The cup which my father has given me, shall I not drink it? You're going to stop what God wants me to do? Put your sword up, Peter. That's the some of y'all in here. Put your sword up. Put your sword up. Although he decided to live with the scars, he chose to forgive those that hurt him. He even prayed for their forgiveness because they didn't know what they were doing. Listen to this. In their anger, deception, and human frailty, they hurt their own source of salvation. Now, let's just flip it. 
I don't want to be on the side that hurts my source of salvation. Some of the people you getting into it with, they're there to help you. They're the people, some of the people you fighting, trying to destroy, you prayed for them. They're an answer from God in your life. And you're hurting the source, the hope for your future to make your life better. So Jesus prayed for Luke 23 and 34. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them for they know not. They have no idea what they're doing. They're hurting the only way to God. This is what people do when they hurt you. If you hold your peace and allow God to fight for you, he will make sure that those that hurt you, listen, will eventually recognize what they have done. Yeah. Yeah. In a moment, after Judas kissed the Savior, the Bible said it didn't take long for him, for God to make him realize what he had done. At that point, the money meant nothing. He dropped it, went and hung himself. Jesus didn't have to retaliate. God's going to always make the people that hurt you realize what they've done. Peter, the Bible said, he denied Jesus three times. And after that third time, he looked and the Bible said his countenance fell. He was sad. He felt it to the point where he's on the beach buck naked. Like a wild man. I'm just done. Because he recognized God made him see what he had done. And at that point, they can either ask for forgiveness or keep living in regret and shame. You don't have to do it. God will. Romans 12 and 19. And you don't be sitting, waiting, and looking for it. That's you might as well do it. Mm -hmm. Like old folk know better for him. Don't say that. Yeah. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Look at somebody say, avenge not yourselves. Avenge not yourselves. But rather give place unto wrath, for it is written. Give place to God to deal with it, for it is written. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. God don't want blood on your hands. Because just like the people that are hurting, never forget the people that hurt. Don't forget either. Amen. Summary! <laughs> Y'all remember grandmama, you say what goes around comes around. Yeah. That's not in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> but it is in the Bible, kinda. Because the Bible says, whatsoever a man sows, he will what? He will reap. If you show mercy, you will obtain it. If you forgive, you will be forgiven. If you extend grace, grace will be what? Extended to you. But if you fight back, listen, retaliate, seek vengeance. Your life will be riddled with constant fighting, bickering, slandering, hatred, and malice. Not only that, but your children will have to grow up under that. Constant feuding, malice. No peace when you choose the road of vengeance. When you open the door to revenge, it's like turning on a faucet and breaking the handle off. You cannot stop it from flowing into every aspect of your life. This is a terrible way to live. And this is not the example that Jesus gave us when handling hurt.
cannot stop people from hurting you. You cannot predict it or stop trusting people because of it. You must allow life to happen and go through that. You know, God told me something. He said, you know, people are hurting you to change you. He said, the devil can't change you. You know, the devil can't change any of us. He's got to use what people do to change you. So people hurt me so that he would change, the devil would change the way I feel about people. Then I'm walking around with one eye open at everybody. Then I can't form any good relationships. Then I can't trust anybody. So I can't preach good to anybody if I have a trust issue. If I have a trust issue, my sermons are going to be against the people and not for the people. You see what I'm saying? So the devil will do whatever he can to change you so that his agenda, you will adopt his agenda. Right when I start loving folk, folks start tripping. That was the devil trying to change me. He can't change me. I'm going to love God's people because God loves God's people. I'm going to love the crazy ones in here because I've been crazy. I've been crazy before. Some folks think I'm still crazy. I may be. <laughs> but I'm going to love the crazy folks. I'm going to love the, the backbiting and uh, heart stabbing folks in here. Folks can't help it. They mama raised them like that. The tail bearers and the won't shut up. I'm going to love them. Yeah. I know who you are. I know all y'all. And I'm going to love you because, I mean, hey, we all human and we all in here to grow. We all in here to get better. And I'm praying that something that I'm preaching will jump on you and wrestle you down and beat you. To, no, I'm just <laughs> But I'm praying that something I'm saying will help you. Because I've seen so many of you grow and change. And it's beautiful. So you must allow life to happen. You cannot predict it or stop trusting people because of it. You must allow life to happen and go through the hurt that others put you through. Look at somebody and say, go through it. Suffering in this life is a part of every believer's walk. Whether it's at the hands of a parent, spouses, friends, or your own children or total strangers, you must endure it. Whether or not it's their fault, your fault, or both, you must what? Endure it. Whether you could have prevented it or you were blindsided by it, guess what you have to do? You got to endure it. No matter what it is or how it happened or who did it to you, you must endure it. You will be hurt in this life. You probably won't forget it either. But you must forgive and endure it the same way Jesus did. When we are able to do this, we become one with him and the sufferings that he endured for us. Amen? First Peter 3 and 13. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? But, and if you suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye. Be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Everyone stand to your feet. <laughs> Y'all pray for your pastor. Do you pray for me? You pray for me. Really? But when you see folks trying to hurt me and hurt us and whatever, pray for them too. Amen. Put the sword up and pray. But even in your own families, there are things that you go through that you got to keep going. I want to pray for you and believe. You just, you, just, you, you just have to keep going. They jealous of you, Jeff? Some of them jealous of you. Because you made a decision that some, some folks just couldn't make. They're jealous. But you got to keep going. Want to take your family around and 
certain people, some of y'all want to go visit and different things, they don't want you to come. They don't like the way it looks or makes them look. But you know what you got to do? You got to keep going. You got to keep going. Jealous that you're happy, Elder Willie? You're happy. You got a good woman. Good wife. They, they, they don't like it. But you know what you got to do? You got to keep going. You know, my, my son, man, I mean, y'all don't know what they try to put my son through. Because he's like me. That's my son. They want to kill him. They want to hurt him. They want to, because they want to be my son. And they ain't my son. That's my son. Keep going, son. You got to keep going. And yeah, that's what people do, and that's how people think they're getting somebody back when they are really hurting themselves. But we're not going to be the kind of church that retaliates and fights. We're going to do, do things the way Jesus did them. We're going to go through it. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. Well, keep going, Julian. They don't understand. They don't understand what you decide to do with your family. All them kids, you just jumped up and moved. But man, look at you now, Julian. Look at you. Look at y'all. Have y'all looked at y'all? <laughs> keep going. Jay, you know. When they come at me, they come at Jay. They come at Jay first, because Jay is Jay Bryan. But look at y'all. Every kid in this church is touched by y'all. You got to keep going. You got to keep going. Don't give up the plan of God for people that are envious of the plan. Don't give up the plan of God on your life for anyone. Keep going. I want to pray with you. You need, you need endurance in this area. You need help with hurt that you've been carrying and you've been wanting to lash out, or whatever it is. And you need God to, hey, I can promise you the hurt ain't going away, but God can help you by his spirit. The fruits of his spirit are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. You know how good that is? I just said everything that, that's, that exists, that's good. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Those are the fruit of his spirit. So when Jesus was his flesh, <clears throat> his flesh wanted another way. But the fruit of God's spirit came in him. And gave him the strength to finish. So, man, yeah, walk around with the scars. By all means, walk around with the scars. Walk around with the wounds. Walk around with the bandages, the crutches. The Bible said Jacob wanted the blessing of the Lord so bad that he grabbed hold to the angel and the angel broke his hip and he still wouldn't let go and he walked with a limp for the rest of his life but I'd rather walk with a limp into the blessing of God than walk straight without it that was his attitude it's gonna hurt yeah it's gonna hurt God will finish what he started. Everyone bow your heads. Yeah, you homeschooling and man, your family like homeschool, that's a cult. Kids got to be around other kids. We got 300. Kids need to be kids. Look who's talking, all your kids trash. 
they got the comments, oh, they beat you up, and man, you got to deal with all of that all the time. You down there in Texas with the Branch Davidians 2023? Mama, I'm in Northridge and Hills, not Waco. Yeah, but that's Texas. Yeah, I know what you go through, but you got to keep going. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this word. God, we thank you. And we even thank you for the pain we've endured to just get it. And we thank you for all that we've learned, how strong we've become, the endurance you've taught us. Father God, the passion you've given us to stick with your way no matter what, no matter what people say, no matter what people do, we're going to stick with your plan. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And we pray right now, everyone lift your hands. God, give us the strength, the power to continue to endure. To continue to endure. To continue to endure. We've lost people along the way, friends, family, children. Husbands, wives, whatever. But we're going to endure. By no means will we stop. We will keep going. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Come on and hug somebody. Give them a 2023 pandemic COVID-19 hug. And tell them I'm going to keep going no matter what. I will keep going no matter what. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going no matter what. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. I mean, to encourage us to keep going. In spite of what folks say and do, we got to keep going. You know, I don't get mystical and all of that goofy. And God has spoken to me and I've heard his voice. I've heard it audibly, maybe twice in my whole life. And I know folks got a problem with that. We'll just have one. But when he called me to ministry, I had an out-of-body experience with the Lord. I'll never forget. And then when the pandemic, right before the pandemic, well, during the pandemic, after we went outside, and I just was praying, and I said, Lord, I was in here praying. I said, Lord, I, just, I don't know what to do. I don't know what's getting ready to happen. And all these people are depending on me to make a decision. And God said, nope, wrong. He didn't speak that out of me. Spoke it in my spirit. He said, nope, wrong. Ain't nobody depending on you to make a decision. They're depending on me to make a decision. God. And I'll tell you what to do. And I said, well, what do I do, Lord? And he spoke out of me. And he said, keep going. He said, keep going. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And that's why we're here today. Because he told me keep going. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to keep going. 